any more than George Bush's opposition to Saddam was about WMDs. Contested details about Iran's inten nuclear intentions are beside the point. Mere smokescreen. For Schumer and his Republican Israeli cronies, as with Bush, the demand is for regime change, nothing less. In his position paper, Schumer explains that, quote, the non-nuclear, the non-nuclear elements of the deal give me the most pause. I will vote to disapprove the agreement because I believe Iran will not change. Schumer has concluded, he says, after, quote, deep study, careful thought, and considerable soul searching, unquote, that Iran is, quote, an ugly dictatorial theocratic regime with nefarious goals. How's that for soul searching? Iran is the sower of chaos throughout the Middle East with its misbehavior. In other words, for Schumer, Iran remains and will always be an unrepentant rogue state, a permanent member of the axis of evil. You don't cut a deal with the likes of that. You cut off its head. Compare Schumer's stubbornly ignorant stance with that of his Israeli counterpart, Bibi Netanyahu, as portrayed by prominent Israeli critic Yuri uh, Avneri. Quote, According to Netanyahu, Iran constitutes a mortal danger to Israel. If it obtains a nuclear weapon, God forbid, it will use it to annihilate Israel. It must be stopped by any means. So what did Netanyahu do? For years he alarmed the world. Every day the cry went out, save Israel, prevent the destruction of the Jewish state, prevent a second holocaust, prevent Iran from producing the bomb. He used every rostrum from the Knesset to the United States Congress to shout out his message. At long last, a weary world paid heed. Okay, let's get all the great powers of the world together to compel Iran to end this nonsense. And they did. The USA, Russia, China, Britain, France, Germany, practically the whole world commanded Iran to start negotiations. There was only one single issue. Prevent Iran from getting the bomb. And then something unexpected happened. Iran's political system replaced their loudmouth president with a very different one, a soft-spoken, eminently reasonable politician. Negotiations started and Iran sent an even more soft-spoken, eminently reasonable diplomat to conduct them. The foreign ministers of the world were enchanted. After playing a little hard to get, Iran accepted an uh, agreement. The world got more or less everything it wanted. No bomb for a long time. Very intrusive inspection procedures. Everybody happy. Everybody, that is, except Netanyahu. He was furious. What kind of an agreement is this? The Iranians will get the bomb. If not now, then in 15 years, or in 25 years, or in 50 years, in any way. Even if they don't get the bomb, the Iranians will get legitimation and money. They will support anti-Israeli terrorists like Hezbollah and Hamas. The Iranians will cheat. Persians always cheat. They can't help it. It's in their blood. Unquote. This is really the infantile basis of the opposition to this deal by Schumer and Netanyahu and all their cronies. Let's no longer dignify it with reason or debate. Instead, let's thank Louise Slaughter and Kristen Gillibrand for their support of the deal and work to persuade their less infantile congressional colleagues who are still on the fence. Thank you. <laughs>